content for 2021. Uh, last week I talked a little bit about some of the non-continuity Batman books that I've been reading over the last few months. Uh, quite a few titles wrapped up in December, so I thought that was kind of a perfect opportunity to do that. For this week, I thought it might be kind of fun to look back on the year as a whole. If you've been following me since I've been back on YouTube, I really started doing YouTube videos regularly again with the launch of Infinite Frontier. I read every single book that DC was putting out, basically in all of March and April, I want to say. Definitely for the entire month of March. And the intent was just to kind of get my feet wet and get a sense of what DC was putting out because it had been a long time since I was reading current DC titles. And when that finished, I kind of started batting around the idea of what if I just read everything Batman? I've always wanted to do that. I thought it might be fun. All told, it ended up being a lot bigger undertaking than I thought it was going to be because DC has gone completely nuts with how many Batman books are coming out. But it's been fun nonetheless. Um, but since I started reading everything DC with Infinite Frontier, and then maintained reading everything Batman after that, um, I had read everything basically from March onward that DC put out from Batman, with just a couple of exceptions. The only stuff that I had missed out on was Future State, which I've spent the month of December going back through all those books, so I'm almost finished. I'll probably do a video on Future State early next year. Um, all I have left is some of the stuff in the Batman Urban Legends for like backup stories and I haven't read the Nightwing two-issue miniseries because I actually didn't realize it existed. <laughs> so I had gone through, read all the books and then I saw an ad for Nightwing and was like, oh shoot, I gotta go back and read Nightwing. So I am primed to talk through what my favorite Batman books were for the year. And I thought a lot about how I wanted to do this video, um, but what I ultimately settled on was just my five favorite books overall. I'm not talking about series, I'm not talking about covers, I'm talking about what were my five favorite reads of the year when it came to Batman. I thought that would be kind of a fun way to go about it. I am going to throw in a runner-up, which I'll start with, and then we'll get into the top five. So without further ado, these were my top five favorite Batman books that I read in 2020. So my honorable mention has to go to Batman 118. Um, I was all over this book in December. It's Cult of the New, which is why it's the runner-up. The fact of the matter is there's still three more issues in this story arc, and so I don't feel comfortable really making it a top five. Um, but the art in this was fantastic. I thought it was a great setup for a new story. We're bringing back Batman Inc. and digging into that a little bit more. And it had a fantastic twist in which Lex Luthor is now running Batman Inc. Now that Bruce Wayne is no longer a billionaire, which is a great setup for what will hopefully be a great 2022 in the ongoing Batman series. Um, for those of you guys who have been watching my videos a lot, you know that uh, Fear State wasn't really my jam. There were things I liked about it, things I really didn't care for. As much as I've liked James Tinian on Batman, the constant barrage of like mega events and introducing tons of new characters every single issue, uh, it's been a lot to take in over the last couple of years. And so it was nice to kind of settle into a little bit of a smaller story, see Batman do some detective work, get some great artwork from Jorge Molina, all those reasons made this easily a shoe in as a runner-up, even though it's not in my top five. It probably could be. It really depends on how this story pans out in the long term over the next year. Alright, coming in at number five is a book that I was not sure I was going to pick up originally. When I first decided to really start digging into all the Batman books, I had to decide, am I going to read only continuity, or am I going to try to read some of the tie-ins and non-continuity books? And the first one that I was like, eh, I probably don't need to pick this up, there's really no reason to, was Batman The Adventures Continue. And the reason is, it's a tie-in to a TV show. And I was like, eh, I don't really read TV show tie-ins, do I need to read it just because it's Batman? And ultimately I rolled the dice on it, and really just because I was in the mood for Paul Dini. I like Paul Dini as a writer, I really love the animated series, and I planned on basically just reading the first issue and rolling with it. This issue was strong enough that not only have I picked up every issue since, it also made me pick up Batman 89 when that came out, which is a book that, believe it or not, I was actually on the fence about reading, <laughs> uh, although that seems kind of silly now, um, but 
I wasn't planning on reading it originally. And then also it made me go back and pick up The Adventures Continue Season 1. Um, so I have picked up all eight issues of that first season. I haven't had a chance to read it yet, but I did grab it and I'm excited to dig into it. Now I could pop this open and show you guys the artwork and tell you about how amazing the art is. The fact of the matter is it's just a facsimile of the animated series. Nothing really that special. Uh, as much as I'm not really a Riley Rossimo fan, the cover is probably the best art of the book. Um, what really shines in this book and made it into a top five read for me was Paul Dini's writing. The way Deadman plays out in this, how he interacts with the Court of Owls, and some of the twists and turns to sort of how that universe actually works was really cool. It was neat seeing the Owls in the animated series universe to begin with, but then kind of what they did with it was clever, interesting, and made for a really fun read. So for that reason, it made it to my number five. If this had the most like stellar, fantastic art, maybe it would have gotten higher. But as it is, being a top five read, nothing to sneeze at. Absolutely recommend this book and recommend this series to anybody who's ever thought about picking it up. If you like the animated series, give The Adventures Continue a read. You will not be disappointed. <laughs> Number four is Batman Secret Files Miracle Molly. Uh, I had a lot of fun reading this book and this one I will actually open up and show you guys because the art is a big part of what made this book work. The art in this actually reminded me of like Frank Miller's Ronin a little bit. It has that kind of cyberpunk samurai vibe to it. Um, it's kind of noir. It's kind of cyberpunk. Um, on its own I think it's quality artwork. But what really brings this book to another level is the marriage of the art with the actual story being told. Because in this you get the origin story of Miracle Molly, you learn how she became the way she was, and when you boil it down, basically it just opens with her as kind of a loser. Like, you know, she's someone, she's married, she's kind of done all the socially normal things that there are to do, and she just finds the repetition in her life very disinteresting, she's disconnected, and she's trying to find a new home and find her voice. As the story continues, the art and the colors do an amazing job of illustrating the story that James Tinian is actually delivering to the audience. And it's the marriage of those two things that I thought really worked extremely well in this book. And as you're going through, there's really some fantastic layouts. So yeah, I mean, just overall, this was a fantastic read. This book was another turning point for me where I was like, eh, do I need to read the Secret Files stuff? Like the little one shots that just sort of elucidate characterization and expand. Like a lot of times these books are fillers and I historically have never read them. Uh, and the first couple I picked up were okay. But this one knocked it out of the park enough that I was actually excited month to month when these Batman secret files were coming out because you just don't know what you're going to get. And in the case of Miracle Molly, it was good enough to be my number four read of the year, which is certainly nothing to see. All right, continuing on with my number three book, I have to give it to Catwoman issue 31. Um, I have absolutely loved Catwoman. Um, ever since Ram V hopped on this book, it's just been a joy to read month to month. I've always really looked forward to it. Fantastic writing and fantastic art by Fernando Blanco. Now, the reason I picked this issue in particular was because I just really enjoyed the story that was told in this. So the context of it is Catwoman is going to break Poison Ivy out of this rich man's mansion at a party. And what makes it great is basically she's explaining in the issue how she's pulled this heist off. She's actually more or less already done it. And then she's explaining to her Mark how she went about it. And I just found the whole sting operation to be clever, fun, uh, just a great representation of what this book has to author. Obviously it's Catwoman, it's a little bit more low-key, not a book that I have ever really paid much attention to, but you know you put a writer on it like Ram V and you have this great noir art style by Fernando Blanco. I mean it's just a recipe for just a fun book and I thought that of all the issues of Catwoman I read, this one was my favorite overall. 
but honestly you could have picked any number of Catwoman books. They were all a lot of fun and worthy as potential top five material for this year's top five Batman. <laughs> them could have been my number one choice and I went back and forth a bunch of times around which one it was gonna be and I'm still I'm still not sure but we're gonna roll with it I gave my number two to the Batman Detective Comics 2021 annual this is a newer one so I haven't had as much time to sit on it and then on top of it this is really a setup for the Shadows of the Bat storyline that's gonna be coming in 2022 um, so for that reason, you never know, like, you know, my opinion of this particular issue might change a little bit just based on how that series plays out. Um, right now I am totally amped to see how that series plays out, by the way. So, um, hopefully I'm not setting myself up for disappointment, but Mariko Tamaki has been doing a great job on Detective Comics. And this is the best issue that I think she's put out starring Batman. Uh, bar none of the other Detective Comics books she's written. And what made this story so interesting was just the parallel lives of young Bruce Wayne and adult Batman. The core sales pitch of this story is when Bruce Wayne was a kid, he came into contact with a serial killer. Uh, the killer almost died, and Thomas Wayne stepped in and basically saved this man's life. He's a doctor and he lives by the Hippocratic Oath. Now, what's interesting about that is this serial killer lives on in Arkham Asylum and eventually gets out. And then adult Batman finds himself having to deal with basically the problem that Thomas Wayne has created. And Batman has a very different way of solving problems than Thomas Wayne did. You know, this is someone who's clearly mentally deranged. It's more complicated than, you know, he's just villain of the week. Um, there's more going on with him as a character, and there's a very valid case to be made about what really would help this person and help society. Is it just throwing him inside Arkham Asylum yet again, or is there a better solution that could truly fix this problem permanently? And so this whole issue is really couched in some intelligent philosophical musings that are genuinely dealt with. They're not just like thrown out and then kind of ignored, which can be kind of annoying. Um, it really deals with them very directly, I thought, um, and I was impressed by that. And then on top of it, the way Mariko Tamaki writes Batman and Nightwing in this, their banter in this just felt so true to those characters and how they've interacted over many, many years. Um, it just gave me a feeling that I haven't had uh, when seeing them interact in several years. And I, again, I... I said this at the time, I don't know exactly what it was, but the bottom line is Mariko Tamaki just really nailed the dynamic between those two characters, and um, I was really impressed with that as well. Uh, David Latham's art, I thought, really fit this story well, uh, and made for a very well-rounded package, well-deserving of the number two spot in this year's favorite Batman reads, even deserves number one, but it's going to be number two. It got edged out by one other book, just by the thinnest of margins. All right, so in my number one spot, some of you may already see this coming. If you watched my Worlds of Batman overview last week, you'll know this was a series I was super excited about. And one particular issue in this stood out. And the reason this got my number one spot um, really boils down to this is the single most memorable issue of Batman I read all year. With Batman Reptilian issue number four, I don't need to even open it or leaf through it. <laughs> I already know that I love this issue and I remember it very specifically. Um, so I've spent the entire year not really spoiling what is in this issue. Um, you may have gotten it through context, but I've never spoken openly about it. So if this is a book that you're going to read, I would advise you guys to go ahead and just click off the video. Thanks for watching. Be sure you subscribed, leave a comment, thumbs up, all that fun stuff. If you have read it, stick around. Let's spoil the heck out of this thing. So <laughs> um, before we get into that, I'll just really quick touch on the art again. I've said it before. Uh, fantastic, fantastic artwork. So atmospheric and so appropriate for the story that's being told. Um, what you find out in this book is that Killer Croc has inadvertently 
marked all of these other criminals for death. And the way in which he did that was he didn't realize that he released a bunch of pheromones while he was at this criminal convention that he was at um, that caused all of these other criminals to be marked. And the creature that is going around killing everyone is actually the offspring of Killer Croc himself. And without realizing it, Killer Croc is actually female, or at the very least asexual in some way. Um, I thought that that was just the most insane twist. <laughs> and the way Batman deals with it, um, the way he chastises Killer Croc and like pokes fun at Killer Croc is just so maniacal and is just dripping with disdain. Um, it just made for a fantastic read, super interesting, um, such an unexpected direction to take this character, but so appropriate for the story that is told here. Um, when I got to issue four, I remember thinking with issue three that the story was a little drawn out. Like, you know, Batman's got his detective work that he's doing. He's trying to figure out what's connecting the deaths of all of these criminals in the Gotham underworld. And, you know, it's just kind of a procedural one step at a time going through each individual person. And then eventually we're going to find out who it is. Um, and sort of the formula of the story for me was wearing a little thin. I was like, if this is going to run for six issues, like, I can't just go from one crime scene to the next for another three issues. And then issue four comes out and completely delivers on the premise. Uh, here's the offspring of Killer Croc, by the way, in the flesh. And it just made for a fantastic conclusion. And those last two issues is just nonstop revelation after payoff makes for such a fun series overall, um, but it was really issue number four that blew my mind the most out of all of Batman Reptilian as a whole and really elevated this story from just a solid story with great atmospheric artwork to my favorite miniseries of the year and my favorite single issue with issue four for 2020. So I hope you guys this best of Batman issues. If you're someone who doesn't read a ton of Batman, these are all issues worth picking up, like Batman 118, great hopping on point. Adventures continue. Honestly, you could hop in almost anywhere. A lot of these are one and dones or like two or three issue arcs. So um, if you've ever been on the fence and this book sold you on it, just, I mean, you don't have to go out and grab number one. Go out and read any random issue, like you'll probably have a good time with it. Catwoman may not work as well as a single issue because it is part of a much larger ongoing arc that Ram V spent several issues developing before Fear State came in and paid off slash derailed some of it. <laughs> but this has got to be coming out in trade soon. If you are someone who likes Ram V, this is definitely worth a pickup. Check it out in trade and tell me what you think. I'd love to talk to somebody about this because nobody's talking about Catwoman other than me, as far as I know. Miracle Molly, another great single issue. You can just hop in and read this. If this is a character that interests you, go check it out. Detective Comics Annual 2021, another single issue, standalone story. If this is in your comic shop, pick it up. You can read it on its own. And then finally with Batman Reptilian, Probably best to wait for the trade at this point on this, but I'm sure it's coming soon or coming out in hardback. Uh, this is probably best digested as one long story arc, to be honest. Um, I really enjoyed reading it month to month. I think it does work both ways. So if you didn't buy Batman Reptilian when it was coming out, uh, keep an eye out for it. Go check it out. Give it a read. It's my second recommendation of this in two weeks, so I'll stop and end this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. All you new subscribers out there, special thanks to you guys. I'm so excited to have you guys on the channel. I will be back later this week with a final movie rewind for the year. And I can't wait to see what's in store for us in 2022. So thank you guys for a great year on YouTube. And above all, I hope you guys have a great week.